Even when you don't feel like it, you have responsibility to do something anyways. I've been really uh, thinking about this concept recently of acting despite how you feel and acting despite your emotions. And a lot of people give kickback when they hear that because they people don't wanna bury their emotions and neither do I. But the fact is, every day you have responsibility and you can't <clears throat> sit around just because you're sad and not get anything done, nor can you just lash out and hurt yourself or hurt somebody else because you're angry. So to a degree, actually, I would argue completely, you have to be under control of your emotions, especially if you're a man, you have to be under control of your emotions, but people in general, um, not just men, people in general, I think putting aside emotions and looking at facts helps you understand things and have uh, you have like better conversations with people because you can talk about what is, you can talk about facts and you can put aside your feelings and understand facts and have more rational conversations with people. <clears throat> now, a lot of people are like, well then what good are emotions? So I just ignore my emotions and act anyways. Well, like I said, if you're sad, sometimes you still have to work. If you're angry, sometimes you still have to control yourself. A lot of the time you still have to control yourself. But there is something to be said about what emotions are actually telling us. Like, what are your feelings actually telling you? I'm driving to the, or I, I just drove to the gym. I'm at the gym. Par I'm in the parking lot of the gym. And I was thinking about when I was 22. I'm 28 now. So that was six years ago when I was 22. I remember, <clears throat> or actually years before that too, like all through college, I remember sitting and feeling nervous because I had a presentation that Friday or because there's a social event later that day. I remember laying in my dorm room bed, just like having butterflies in my stomach, feeling nervous, feeling anxious. And I think it's important in those moments not to let those feelings control you. So my whole thought at that time when I was 22 or younger was like, or actually let's just say around 22 when I started overcoming social anxiety um, my whole thought was, well, I'm going to have to talk to people anyways, so I might as well go throw myself in some social situations before then. Because, like, if I have a speech on Friday that I have to give for class or a social event later that week, let's say on the weekend I'm going to be socializing with a lot of people and I'm very nervous about it, what is that nervousness telling me on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday leading up to the event? What is that anxiety actually telling me? A lot of people think like like our general view in society seems to be like oh oh it's because the social event is too hard oh it's it's because it's a bad thing listen to your anxiety and just you know comfort yourself what i found actually leads to better success if you actually because like deep down don't you want to socialize don't you want to give that presentation and do a good job I found out that the response to that anxiety, by listening to that anxiety and like listening to what it was telling me, I could then respond to it. I could be like, well, what is this anxiety actually telling me? I'm sitting there, it's Monday, I have a presentation Friday. I'm like, I'm really nervous about it. What is it actually telling me? Well, it's telling me, prepare for the event more. It's telling me, go out and socialize so that you're competent enough to speak in front of you know, the crowd of people in your class, it's telling, it's telling me to prepare, you know, that those feelings are telling you to prepare in the moment. So I think the first tip, this is a video on five tips on how to overcome social anxiety. The first tip would be develop a really good relationship with your feelings. Listen to what they're actually telling you, what they're actually telling you, not what you think they're telling you, not just like some spur of the moment decision to just crumble because you feel anxious, but what are they actually telling you? Oh, your anxiety, you're feeling anxious because you have a presentation in a couple days. Well, prepare for the presentation, go out and talk to people so that you're not so nervous talking in front of people, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, so the way, the first way that I started overcoming social anxiety, and I'll get into throwing yourself in social situations after this, but I think the first thing that you have to do is realize that 
you need to develop a very good relationship with your feelings, if with your emotions, and respond to them. How you respond to your emotions is very important. All right, tip number two, whip your phone out in a parking lot and start talking to it. Just kidding, fuck. It's one of those jokes. It's only funny if it's spontaneous. All right, tip number two is an easy one. You're gonna like this one. So when you're hanging out with your friends, um, you always have those moments, right, where you think of something funny to say and then you just quiet yourself down. Uh, force yourself to say it, even if it comes out awkward, even if you're not even sure it's funny or if anybody's gonna laugh. It doesn't matter, you're just hanging out with your friends. So force yourself to say it. Over time, you'll start to become, be more comfortable speaking your thoughts and you'll stop being quiet all the time. But you have to, you have to actively make this happen. So the first two tips were develop a really good relationship with your emotions and your feelings and your body sensations, you know, the anxiety or any other feeling that comes up, joy for that matter. Uh, develop a very good relationship with your feelings and your emotions. Tip number two was when you uh, think of that thing to say and you sense yourself holding yourself back, push it out, say the thing you wanna say, say what's on your mind, condition it like a muscle. Do it with your friends, make it easy. Um, <clears throat> the third thing is you have to put yourself in social situations. I know people with social anxiety probably don't like to hear this, but if you really wanna improve, you probably love to hear this. Cause like, I don't know, I, I felt like by putting myself in social situations a lot when I first started doing it, it was obliterating my social anxiety. It was just going, you know what? I feel this, fuck you, like just punching it in the face. Like, yo, you can't, you can't make me stay home from a party. You can't make me not look that person in the eye. You can't make me do this, make me do that. I don't care if I'm shaky. I don't care if I'm tense. I don't care if I stumble over my words sometimes because I'm nervous. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna do the best that I can to talk to people. I'm gonna throw myself in social situations and see what happens. I'm still here and I've done it a lot. So that's tip number three is you have to put yourself in social situations. Tip number four relates to tip number two, like saying things that are on your mind. Uh, be yourself. I know that's advice that gets told a lot to people, right? Just be yourself. But what is you? You know? Um, I told one guy recently who messaged me saying that he wanted help. He felt lonely and sad and he's addicted to porn and he, and he hates staying home watching porn all the time, but he thinks he's addicted and he can't stop or he thinks that he can't stop. And I'm like, dude, start making YouTube videos, tell people about it. And then he's like, what? No, it's embarrassing. And I'm like, okay, if you're embarrassed about anything, like an addiction that you have, or that you have social anxiety or that you're kind of awkward or that you look weird, you have to just accept it and, and not be afraid of being seen. I get it if it's something really personal like that, like if, if you're like an addict of like pornography or something like that's, yeah, you don't wanna go telling everybody, but like if you're kind of awkward and you're, keep, you're staying inside and you're not talking to people and you're shy and quiet because you don't want people to know how awkward, awkward you are, what are your choices? What are your options? You can go out and be yourself and let people see you for who you are, your awkward, weird self, <laughs> or you can just hide for the rest of your life and stay awkward because the more you go out and socialize and expose yourself to social situations, the better that you get in social situations. Okay, that leads into the final tip. So the final tip is get really passionate about learning something in social situations, whether that's listening skills, whether that's your ability to speak uh, and put your thoughts into words. That's, that was a big challenge of mine. I still have trouble doing that even today. Like, um, yeah, today I, I, I still have trouble putting my thoughts into words. See, I'm overthinking what I'm saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but get really passionate about something. Get really passionate about meeting new people, Get really passionate about finding people who are from different places so you can learn about different cultures. Get really passionate about travel, meet people from different places. Get really passionate about something that involves talking to other people. Because if you get passionate about that, even if it's like getting passionate about showing your mind who's boss, you know, like when, when your mind says, no, stay home from that party because nobody likes you. And then you're like, wait, that's no, that's not true. And you kind of challenge that thought and you're like, no, I'm going to go to the party anyways. Like get really passionate about that or just something, something that relates to social situations so that you can 
have a reason for doing it and a reason for overcoming that social anxiety because you can overcome it. Bonus tip, quit listening to people who tell you you can't do it. Quit listening to the sad people who, are, who want to just stay the way that they are. Quit listening to those people. Listen to people that tell you that you can do it because you can do it. There's plenty of examples of people who have done it, myself included. You can overcome social anxiety. And th this video is five tips on how to do so. So rewatch this video if you want to. If you didn't get the five tips, write them down and do them because they work.